Hi, and welcome back. I appreciate you for taking the time to make it to part four of this mini series on asset registers in industrial environments. So, in this section, in part four, we're going to talk about how we can build an asset register based off of reviewing information in network packet captures. So, we talk about sometimes people call this passive scanning, which I always hate the term. I should have probably even not used it in the slides it makes me cringe since it's not like we talked about in the last section with active scanning where we're sending network packets actively out on the network in in this case we're passively listening right we're sitting on the network using some type of tool like wireshark potentially to be able to capture network traffic and then we can then take the time to review that traffic to find different live hosts that are on the network. We can look at different protocols that are in use and different ports that are used to communicate between those hosts. So we can get a good, at least basic understanding of what's on the network and what's in use on the network, as long as we have the visibility that we need into the, the network. Right? But the, the advantage with, when we talk about network listening or sniffing right, is we're gathering that traffic. It's not active scanning. So we don't have a potential for breaking things. We're not putting those network packets out, which could potentially interfere with a system, especially those older industrial control assets like older PLCs right, that we don't want to touch. We don't want to have any issues with, with any of those devices. So we want to be able to capture network traffic and use that for finding different hosts that are environment and potentially different protocols, ports that are in use. And then maybe even have additional information that we can see, especially if the network traffic is not encrypted, which is more common in control system environments than not, to be able to see, oh, it looks like a PLC communicating. Well, what type of PLC? And I don't want to have to do active scanning. Maybe I don't want to, or it's not safe to walk the environment. So if we can gather that information from a network packet capture, so much the better. So the most commonly used tool to review packet captures is Wireshark. It's, it's typically the most commonly used tool we'll use to capture the traffic. And it's the, the most common we'll also use to, to dissect it. And, and so we'll be able to walk through an example of using Wireshark in, in this section. But it is the most popular uh, packet sniffer slash uh, packet parser that, that we have. Uh, the nice thing is Wireshark is supported by a huge community that not only helps to make Wireshark available for free, but adds additional functionality continually for free. So when we look at what they talk talk about as parsers in, in Wireshark, those Wireshark parsers allow us to parse or interpret different network protocols. And they even have parsers for industrial control protocols. So it's not just about seeing TCP or IP or HTTP or FTP, but what about things like Modbus? Even uh, I was on a call yesterday with engineers complaining about Profinet, right? <laughs> it's, that it has support for all of these, these protocols. I think it has support for over 3,000 protocols now, which is crazy to think about. There's over 3,000 protocols out there. And that's, that's probably a majority that we'll see in a lot of environments, but it's certainly not all of them you could even have find and control system environments customized you know written protocols that were written just for that one specific environment i remember rob lee one time talking about in class about uh, dragos going into an environment and they had no documentation on this specific protocol that was written by this gentleman named bob and and bob eventually passed away unfortunately but no one knew anything about the protocol. So they had to reverse engineer the Bob protocol. And of course, the main tool they used to do that was, was Wireshark. So that's what we're going to look at uh, today in, in, this, in this session and, and 
look at it at a high level, how we can use Wireshark to start finding those assets in the environment. The sample packet capture I'm going to be using for this, you can find at that GitHub repository uh, that you can see down below. They did a really great job of putting together a lot of different packet captures of industrial control protocols and making them, I mean, they really did a very detailed job of creating very simple, clean packet captures for all the industrial control protocols. So you could look at each one of those individually and, and look at different aspects of how the protocols work in different packet captures. So if you're really trying to learn or understand one particular protocol, they're really excellent in helping you do that. So I really appreciate all the work that they had put in together. So I wanted to highlight that and here, and that's the, the packet capture we're going to look at. So in this case, Wireshark actually has this feature called statistics, or there's a menu called statistics. And, and I'm going to go ahead and jump over to, to Wireshark now. You see everything else I have open on my <laughs> machine as well. And so here's the Modbus packet capture that's that's loaded into, uh, into Wireshark. And just at a high level, we can see right, the number of packets, right? So we can see, you know, starting with one, two, three, going on down the line, we can see the source IP address for the traffic. Again, in this case, so we're looking at Modbus traffic over TCP IP. And then there's some other traffic in there as well. But the industrial control protocol we're looking at is, is a TCP IP version of, of Modbus. We can see a destination. We can see the protocol, so you can see there is, at this high level, there's some TCP traffic. We see Modbus TCP traffic. There's uh, the packet link that's listed. And then there's the informational field, which really, that's, for me, that's where the Wireshark parser really comes into play. That's where Wireshark parsers take the network traffic and they reconstruct it into a way that's ideally as a, you know, quote-unquote, plain English for us to be able to read it so we can interpret what's there rather than having to look at zeros or ones or hex like we see you know in the lower right hand corner right it takes all of this and and translates it to all this that we see now where i can see oh here is a modbus command right? and then we can start to see uh, maybe you know some of the more types common types of modbus commands is oh here's the option to be able to read a coil so i want to reach out to that to the yeah, plc in this case and read the value in a coil which would either be a zero or a one it's a binary value right? and in this case we could see oh the source ip address of this initial request is 10.0.0.9 and then the destination is 10.0.0.3 so more than likely the destination 10.0.0.3 is a some probably like a plc well that's great because now we start to be able to get, we are able to build that picture of what's out there on the network so if we didn't know that there was a system at 10.0.0.3 before we do now, and we can even see it responding on the next line with a response from that coil read. And we can even jump down because of the parser, and it even shows us the value of the coil that was read was a zero. Remember, the, the value is either going to be zero, one, on or off, right? true, false. So that's the power of Wireshark. For the rest of this conversation, I wanted to jump back up though to the, the statistics menu, where you can see a couple of different things, right? Cause there's a couple of different options. I'm gonna move this little window out of the way. So we can look at, there's endpoints, which is one of those places that I like to just go to immediately. Cause you can see, and not only with the little, it's got a bunch of different tabs here. So you can see the ethernet tab. So here we're seeing all the, the Mac addresses, right? All the, the, that physical 48 bit address that's physically burned into those, those network interfaces on each of those devices. So we can see, see those there. Now, a lot of times we want to have those Mac addresses listed in our asset register. 
most definitely. A lot of times we're really looking for IP addresses. If there are hosts using IP addresses, I want to know about them. Those are usually the ones I want to look for first because those are the ones the attackers are going to look for first. And then we can go back and look for other assets that are using other protocols other than TCP IP. Right. And not only here, you can see you know, which devices are transmitting how much information, how much are they sending, how much are they receiving. We can jump into, oh, there's the IP version 4. So here now we can see the IP version 4 IP addresses that are associated with those hosts. And you can see 10.0.03, that one we were looking at earlier. You can see 10.10.5.85. So more than likely, we have some different subnets that are involved. We even see 166.161.16.230. So if you're following along at home, when we talk about internal versus external or public IP addresses, this is an IP address on the internet. So if I'm taking a packet capture inside my ICS or OT environment, I don't want to see any indication of public IP addresses. That, that would indicate that there's internet connectivity there somewhere. And we don't want to see that. Almost always, unless we have some type of internet or industrial internet of things deployment, which does take ICS data and sends it up to the cloud. But general rule of thumb, we do not want to see internet connectivity in our control system networks, right? But that's one way where we can see what hosts are in the environment. And then you can also get an understanding of how much information is being sent between these. A lot of control system environments do not send a lot of traffic. You might have one command that goes between two hosts every week or a, once a month, right? They're not, for the most part, very talkative. When you see a lot of talk, talking hosts, that could be things like maybe data historians that are transmitting or uh, transferring process data, right, from, from point, point A to point B. But So again, this is a way we can look at based off of, oh, here's 10 IP addresses that we have in the environment. We also looked at, well, here's the 10 MAC addresses that go with those IP addresses. You can see we don't have any IP version 6, which is completely fine by me. And then we can also see, while there's no UDP traffic, we can see there's TCP traffic. And we can also see the ports. So you can see a lot of different ports. The ones that we're usually keen on are those destination ports of TCP 502, which is used for Modbus. And so it's a great way to get an understanding real quickly of MAC addresses, IP addresses, how much traffic is being sent between hosts, and what ports they're using. So in that case, if I didn't see Modbus earlier in the capture, I could look at, oh, TCP 502. Oh, yeah, that's more than likely that's going to be Modbus 99.99% of the time. So there's endpoints. There's also conversations, which this probably looks very similar. It's just a slightly different view of the information we're looking at just on the endpoints tab. So you can see, yep, oh, there's our Ethernet addresses. But here it's a little different because we can see directly who's talking with who, right? How many packets are being sent and received in which directions, right? The duration, right? When it started, right? How long it lasted. We can see bits versus bytes. So it allows you to drill into that a little bit further. So it might give you a little bit more uh, little bit more context on how much information is being transferred, how fast, when, uh, but otherwise we're not really getting a ton of new information uh, other than I think it highlights better who's talking with who and in which direction. And then you could see, oh, A is sending to B and B is sending to A. Well, you know, it's most of that, maybe all the data is really coming from A to B or from B to A, right? That can actually be important in different types of investigations. So I don't mean to minimize it. It's definitely important, um, not necessarily as much for this conversation in, in building asset registers. So, and there's also other ones in there like the protocol hierarchy, which I saw a highlight real quick where you can see it actually takes all of the data in the packet capture, breaks it down to where we can see, oh, it has IP version 4, and so it's running TCP IP, and that, oh yeah, there's the Modbus traffic 
as well. And it looks like might have even had two packets that had some error conditions in them. So they probably ended up having to be uh, resent. So that gives you just a really high level overview of using Wireshark as a great way to not only create the packet captures, but then to go back and review them to understand right, what do you have on the network. That's really just what we were looking at. So a great alternative is Network Miner. It's really fun to be able to, to jump in there and you can I, I like it for um, kind of the, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it, but it kind of gives you this different little GUI you know, interface. So in this case, if I want to just find a list of IP addresses on the network, then I can load it in there, the, the packet capture, and there's a free version of Network Miner. And you can see it gives me, oh, here's a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hosts. This is the same packet capture we were just looking at in Wireshark. And that uh, there's that 166.161, that public IP address. So we wonder well, where's that internet connectivity coming from on the industrial control network. And then also based off of additional information in the packet capture, it tries to understand well, what operating system is running on those. So I don't think they do a lot of work, at least in the free version around control systems. So in this case, you see a lot of Windows devices, which of course we see a lot of Windows devices and control systems these days. So I'm not saying these aren't these aren't accurate, but um, I think from what I've seen, it, it's great to get a list of hosts. It's not necessarily gonna be the greatest for guessing operating systems for all control system assets. But again, it's a great way to get a, a idea of what's out there very quickly. If you ever do any type of forensics, even though that's not really the type here or network investigations, it's also really cool because if you feed a packet capture to Network Miner and let's say it had different files or images in it, you can see there's some additional tabs here, it actually extracts those, those files and images for you. So if there was a picture or let's say a Word document, it actually pulls those out and reconstructs them so you can open up that Word document perfectly fine in Word and read it, or you can see exactly what the image was. So it's really fun from, from that perspective. And it does some other things you can see, but um, those are, for me, those are the more fun, fun uh, tips and tricks, I guess you can use for uh, net my, network miner for. So, uh, and then here you can see where it expands out, where it's trying to build again, every little piece of information from the packet capture. Again, no active scanning, we're not using Nmap. But just from that packet capture, it says, oh, hey, I found this host at 10.0.0.3. It looks like it's Windows. Here's the MAC address. That MAC address, based off of the first half, we know that's registered to Intel. So Intel makes this network card. We can see when it was made. And then we can see additional pieces of information, not only about the operating system, but the communication port. So we see, oh, yeah, there's TCP 502 for Modbus. And that's even telling us, hey, it looks like Modbus TCP traffic. And then we can see how much information was sent and received. And you can even break down even to those sessions and who was sending and receiving, who's communicating with this device. So it's, it's another look at, in some ways, it's kind of a little bit more fun to look at than what you might see in Wireshark. But you definitely want to master Wireshark before maybe playing with other tools like Network Miner. So again, I appreciate everybody for taking the time to to watch the video. I thank you for 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 taking the time. Uh, but if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, definitely you can post it in the comment section or you feel free to reach out to me at any time. So you can see there's my email address, my my where I am at LinkedIn, and uh, you obviously found the YouTube channel. So <laughs> thanks again, and uh, I appreciate you for checking it out.